It says let um, L, so we're going to call that L, which is the L in this picture. We're going to have a little group one sheet. Let L be the line tangent to the graph of y equals x to the n at the point 1, 1, where n is greater than 1, as shown above. So the first thing it asks you to do is find the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n dx in terms of n. So in order to do that, you have to remember that x to the n, where n is simply a number, is probable. So the answer for the integral of anything to the n is simply x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 evaluated from 1 to 0. n plus 1 over n plus 1, where x is equal to 1, gives you 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus 0 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and 0 to any power is always 0, so we end up with 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and again, 1 to any power is going to simply be 1. So this in reality is 1 over n plus 1. What T be the triangular region? Bounded by L, the x axis, and the line x plus 1. Show that the area is equal to 1 over 2n. So again, we have to think of T as a triangular region. So it's bounded by, and I know your sounds like what's is on it, it's bounded by L, the x axis, and the line x equals 1. So it gave us our goal. We have to figure out how to get there. So thinking about an area of a triangle, an area of a triangle is one half, so I'll put one half in here, base times height. In the case of this problem, the slope is my base or my region. The length of the base is going to be the distance then between them, which was L. So essentially what I would do is since L is one of my bounding lines and L is linear, I would get the equation of the for L. Because it's really hard to do this without knowing like, what L is representing.
ejemplo, a menos de igual a las más, y continuar la x minus 1. So what would be y dx be in this case? Well, what would be y dx is going to come from the answer right here, right here, right? So that's my integral. So if I integrated that, that's like moving forward. So that 1 over x plus 1 is the forward. The x to the n is my function, so the derivative of x to the n is going to be my dy dx. So y is equal to x to the n, so my derivative for dy dx is going to be the derivative of x to the n, which is x to the n minus 1. And in this case, I have one. And that would make my one yeah. And for the one, we have minus one, and we know one to any power is one. That makes my one yeah. So why does any of that matter? Well, that matters because that is going to represent the length of my base. So then, if the slope is n, don't have that many questions. I feel like I'm going to manipulate our slope to be the y dx. And all of that.
and white and black and black. L and black accents. Express the area of S in terms of N, in terms of N that maximizes the area of A. So your area for S is going to be the y equals x to the n line, which is that curve, and then it's going to also be minusing a of t, which there is a So area of S equals x to the n. integrated from 0 to 1, which is what we did in part A, minus A of T. I don't know how they got 1 over N. I have to integrate my area. So yeah, my base is N, but then if I get back to that, I'm going to have to integrate Because like, from before, you got the 1 over n plus 1, so then you would end up with 1 over n for t, because there's no plus 1. I'm sitting here going, I don't understand, I'm getting n, not 1 over n, so I need to integrate it to get my 1 over n. Alright, so a of s would be an integral for the area from x to the n, the x from 0 to 1, minus the area of a to t, because if you did this, you're going to get that whole region. You want to subtract a of t to just get a of x. So going from 0 to 1, area under that curve. We already know the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n of dx is equal to 1 over n plus 1. For part a, they told me a of t in part b. So I end up with 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n. That's so much better now. And then, if you want to maximize something, how do you maximize something? You have a function, and you want to maximize it. What do we do? Where do maxes occur? Or minimums occur? At zeros of the derivative. So we're going to find the derivative of AS. So we're going to have AS prime. N is like my variable in this case, though. Then you have two choices. You can treat those like 1 over U's. You can do closure rules. You can bring them up as negative powers and do chain rules. But again, this is like a number over a function. So you either have to do your quotient rule, or you have to bring it up. So this is n plus 1 to the negative 1 minus 2n to the negative 1. You know what I'm saying? Like if I wanted to do a chain rule, you would bring that whole thing up, bring your power down in front. Subtract one from your power, multiply by the derivative to the side. something you set your derivative equal to zero. So that's like saying my top is equal to zero or my bottoms are equal to zero or you can like cross multiply and get all of your zeros. Typically if I do this, I like a common denominator for my zeros. So that makes that negative one, two n squared plus two n plus 
1 squared all over n plus 1 squared. Do I understand what I'm saying up above about like integrating and how that might end up soft with that big band that you're going to drop it to the bottom? I feel like I'm going to drop it to the bottom. Let me go back to the room. 